Hey everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be another Apto game review. This game is going to be one featuring his Talon, and some of the players that are notable in his game are obviously himself, KT's substitute top laner, and then you have Rush on Shen, and then you have Kingzone's Cuz on Evelyn. So, let's just get right into it. I'm just going to skip ahead to one minute. And there's not a lot of action, okay. I thought maybe I would have to rewind. I'm just gonna put the camera on Apto. Interesting, so it's actually a mid-rumble. We saw a mid-rumble with Smite, but seeing it with Ignite is definitely something else. Uh, I can't imagine, I mean, it, so the, the thing in this matchup is if Talon ends up getting ahead, then everything's just gonna be really, really ugly for Rumble. He's not gonna have a very easy time staying alive, even if he goes for the Seekers and two Zanyas pretty early. Don't think that it's going to be that beneficial. Fortunately for Rumble, he does have the luxury of being able to go Ninja Tabby. Um, because it will have dual resistance uh, against the Rek'Sai and the Talon, obviously the on-hit from a lot of the characters on Apto's team. Champions. You can see that he's not actually using the rake to shove the wave. So let's just talk about his laning for the last 30 seconds. So as soon as this lane starts, one of the things that you'll notice is that he's electing not to just rake immediately. In fact, he still hasn't even skilled... Yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't actually skilled a point yet. Almost like he's unsure what skill he actually wants to level up. So Rek'Sai is starting on the top left side, which means that if Rek'Sai would end up ganking, th there's a few routes that Rek'Sai can go. Um, Rek'Sai could do the, the super weird route, which is this, uh, but this isn't all that common. Rek'Sai can also just do this, right, into this, and then transition to the right-hand side, and then obviously contest the right-hand side Scuttle Crab. Um, and then depending on what Talon is doing, Talon can play right-hand side of the lane with Rek'Sai, and then Rek'Sai can invade Evelyn's jungle. Uh, and th this should actually be fine, because Gangplank is most likely going to want to just play safe uh, against the Aurelia and the Evelyn combo early on. And so if Talon shoves the lane right now, one of the things that he could end up doing is going in and try to get some intel on the Wraiths right away. Uh, but that's not really necessary, because it looks like the enemy bottom lane is still Mia. You can see that there's even a, a question mark ping down in the bottom. You can see Shen and Vladimir. And what this probably means, with the enemy bottom lane not having arrived yet, like, you can see that they arrive a little bit late, Tom Kench is actually missing HP, and then Cho'Gath uh, is missing some mana. This means that Evelyn is starting red. Um, sometimes at higher MMR, bottom lanes can intentionally arrive late, and sometimes they'll even, uh, like, leash, or fake leash a red, or fake leash uh, the golems, or, no, well, not the golems anymore. Um, they'll fake leash the red, and they'll arrive late, they'll be missing mana, they'll be missing HP, and it can try to fake out the enemy team into thinking that the jungler started this camp or something. But um, in this specific scenario, you notice that Talon's not attacking the minions. He's not trying to rake them. He's not trying to get them low. And if, if he would try to rake them from, from this point in the lane, okay, uh, it would be all too easy for while him being on cooldown, if he tries to come up to the camp, Rumble is just going to have a very easy time uh, hitting him as he tries to hit the minion. Uh, so while Talon would be locked into auto-attack animation, Rumble can just sort of bop him and then kite backwards, and then Talon doesn't have that many minions um, to reciprocate damage onto Rumble, and then they'll get pulled in further, and then the incoming minion wave will be in a really good spot for Rumble, and then because Rumble's already ahead in tempo on the minion wave, it means that he's going to hit level 2 first, which means that if Talon is actually still on cooldown, then Rumble ends up getting Flame Spitter and things get really ugly, and Talon gets zoned out of CS. So... None of that's happening, and he's playing the lane very slow, and because he's playing it like this, you see that he has 1, 2, 3 versus 1, 2, this one's about to die, and then you look at the way that the minions are actually aggroing, and this is actually going to be relatively safe and healthy. So, the lane is actually going to push into Talon, and the second lane will actually push into Talon before it actually goes up into the turret, because R Rumble would need about uh, two flame spitters in order to get them all weak enough with constant auto attacks to cause the crash back into him to happen on the third wave. So what we're seeing here is that the second wave is going to advance further onto Talon's side of the lane. The third wave will be the wave that can crash into the turret, depending on how Talon and Rumble choose to play this out. 
Um, so if the third wave crashes into Talon's turret, then this is around the time where Rek'Sai is on the right-hand side, and as Talon's wave would begin to push back into Rumble, this is when Rek'Sai is actually in close proximity to mid lane, and things can get a little bit tricky. Everything's continuing to be slow. I want to keep it on Apto. And you can see Rek'Sai actually went for an interesting clear. He just does the three camp with Red Wraith and Scuttle Crab, and he then immediately transitions up into top lane. And th this is interesting for a lot of reasons. Um, so right here, when, when Rek'Sai decides to do this, he has the ward, he gets the Scuttle Crab, and you can see that Rek'Sai is still level three. So what Rek'Sai is looking at right now is you see the state of the lane up in top. <clears throat> and these are the, the reinforcing uh, minions, and you can see that the lane is on Gangplank's side. So, if Rek'Sai comes top lane, there's no way for Evelyn to really be here unless Eve was going to do a route that went to the Scuttle Crab, in which case they would obviously know that she's going to be around here, and then Rek'Sai would actually probably just transition into Golems. They're going to end up probably at least getting a flash out of Aurelia here, and then because Talon was playing the lane as safe as he was, um, his lane state is actually going to be really good. He's gank immune versus Evelyn. If Evelyn didn't transition immediately to the right-hand side of the map, Rek'Sai is actually going to be ahead, because what ends up happening here is if Evelyn does uh, red wraiths and then goes straight into her blue buff, if the gank ends up being successful up in top lane, everything gets really awkward, because now Evelyn is, you know, put between a rock and a hard place, where uh, does she immediately try to path over to the this side of the map and try to steal away the enemy's blue buff? Um, or does she just proceed with trying to do like Wolves and Gromp and then recalling and proceeding to the right hand side, at which point her rates would actually be respawn and be rubber banded. Um, but that's pretty much that. Uh, so let's get back to talking about Apto. You can still see that he's playing very safe. Gangplank and Rek'Sai actually end up getting a kill onto Aurelia. And you can see that Apto is just following Rumble. Rek'Sai moves in to Evelyn's jungle, and I can't actually tell what is happening over there, but it does look like they actually trade a kill. So, we can just rewind this, because this is really important. So, as soon as Rumble goes Mia, let, let's talk about Apto's decisions. Alright. He rakes the lane. And then this happens. So Rumble starts proceeding up. Now, the problem is is that uh, mid laners, they make this mistake all the time. All the time they make this mistake. Okay? Rumble cannot get to top lane before this gank would end. It, it, he can only get to top lane if the opponents are adamant about trying to, to push an issue that they don't need to push. So in solo queue, you see people do this all the time where the mid laner Talon will stay and he'll ping that Rumble's on the way and then Gangplank and Rek'Sai, let's say that they don't end up securing the kill on Aurelia and let's say they end up chasing after it. Well, now Rumble's abysmal decision to keep persisting on up into top lane ends up being rewarded. So he ends up being so bad that he's good. Um, so in a spot like this, uh, Apto still has three minions, which means that the wave is actually going to still push into him uh, ever so slightly because it's not at the threshold yet where it goes into the turret range and then causes the bounce back into Rumble. Um, so right here, you can see that he followed Rumble for a little bit and then he turns around. At this point, Evelyn shows up in top lane. One of the things that you can first do is hit tab and check her CS. So she's probably going to be at 12. All right, so uh, she's at 12, okay. So the first thing that you want to do is just tab and hit CS, but I mean, you don't actually have to do that because you can see that she's just level two. Um, the only thing that it would tell you is that she has wraiths or she has wolves uh, consumed as well because she could just be level two with red and blue, in which case she would have eight CS. So uh, Evelyn shows up in top lane and Aurelia ends up going down. And then you can see that Cuz actually ends up taking a little bit of a beating and then Rumble starts moving uh, towards the left-hand side. Now, Apto has two choices. He can either instantly start shoving uh, this wave. He would have to stand here, auto attack this, auto attack this, auto attack this, auto attack this, rake, and then move in, and then eventually come back, CS this, move in, CS this, CS this, and then eventually CS this after his minions have lowered it enough, and then move forward, CS this. 
The problem is, is that the time that it would take him to do all of this and then get the wave into a good spot, it's not going to be quick enough um, because this is a cannon wave. We, we talked about this in previous VOD reviews. So the cannon will end up going into the turret. It'll absorb enough damage. Rumble will actually get back in time. And the next wave that is going to be coming out of the Nexus is still going to be advantageous for Rumble, and the lane state is awkward. This can end up being okay if you don't care about the next wave that's coming out of the Nexus in the event that you would want to maybe invade Wraiths if you think that they're up and you can clear them really quickly, um, or if you want to go over and kill Scuttlecrab, or if you want to proceed down into bottom lane. Now, for instance, let's say that Tom Kench and Cho'Gath were uh, at this point of the map, okay, and your Shen and Vladimir were pushed underneath their turret. You might actually be incentivized to disregard the next wave that's going to come out of the Nexus and hard shove this, uh, get yourself level 3, and then proceed down to the bottom half of the map. If Cho'Gath and Tom Kent recognize that you're missing and Mia Pings come out for their respective team, they might be forced to actually back up off of a wave, and if they have too many minions, they might end up getting self-zoned and denied XP in addition to gold. And you can utilize that, obviously, as a mid laner to propel your Vladimir and your Shen uh, to be in a very good spot and have an advantage down into bottom lane just simply by moving into the Fog of War. Um, that's not really present right now. So, when Rumble starts moving over, you have to track his MS inside of the Fog of War and you have to know exactly where, he's at, where he is. So because the bottom lane rotation isn't really viable, the only other option would be to go into the Wraith Camp and then try to consume the Wraith Camp. Um, because that's not really going to amount to anything gigantic, it's not going to produce some massive advantage for Apto's team, um, what he should end up doing at this point is just keeping the lane state in a relatively safe spot and then continuing to play the lane out as normal. Now the good thing here is that if you, if you just last hit the minions, um, you know, all of the minions for Apto keeps dying, and so Rumble is getting zoned out of a ton of stuff. So if you can zone the opponent out of uh, a lot of XP and a lot of CS, you know, you're looking at like 13 to 14, uh, and that's all that you really need to equate to a kill. Now Rumble comes back into the lane, and you can see that Apto has a lot of Spellcaster minions. It's no longer at a point where he can actually continue the freeze, and so he uses the rake to shove the lane. And I'll probably just end up wave clearing this. And now we'll probably look for a roam or something of that nature where he's going to look for vision. And you can see that there's fights happening down in bottom lane. He just comes in and he gets a ward. Comes back into the lane and Rumble makes a pretty big mistake. Because Rumble... Like, ask yourself, why is Rumble hitting this CS? Rumble has double buffs. So he has the CDR coming in from the blue buff. He has the red buff that is active on him. Um, he's going to have his shield. Talon... The lane state is not good for Talon. Why would Rumble clear this wave? Because Rumble's team just went out in bottom. Apto can't actually roam down into bottom. So why is Trundle or what Trundle? Why is Rumble uh, auto attacking the minions? It makes absolutely no sense. And now Rumble actually leaves himself susceptible because his trade timings are a little bit weird, but Rek'Sai not able to actually follow through and get the knockup. Rumble still leaves himself a little bit susceptible. He actually has flash. He should have flashed the knockup, not flash post knockup, because now he's missing a lot of HP. And this makes it so that it becomes very, very scary for him to actually stay in the lane against the Flash Ignite Talon. Um, because Rumble right now is actually in lethal, and he needs to be aware of that. And you can see what Apto's doing. He's like, you know what, I have you in lethal. Uh, the lane state is really good for me. I can keep the lane here. I'm safe. Evelyn's not going to be able to come help you. In fact, Evelyn just died up in top lane. And you can see that he's not in this position where he wants to shove super fast. But then, when I think it looked like Rumble had maybe recalled, because Rumble was out of vision for quite a while, he ends up raking the lane. And this is probably because Apto thinks that, okay, Rumble actually recalled. So what he wants to do is he wants to shove in this lane and have this wave crash into this turret so that this wave, which is right here, okay, respectively, it's right here, will come up to this wave and then slow push back into Talon, thus enabling another free gank for Rek'Sai in coming minutes. How do I... I don't know how to just 
use the camera like that. Sorry. Rumble's actually still almost within lethal range. He has to be very, very careful. You can see the level of patience that Apto's having with the lane. Now you see Evelyn, Rek'Sai's right there, and that's going to be a kill onto Rumble. He manages to get away from the charm, but Rek'Sai ends up going down. So now we can just follow what's going on. Um, so let's take a look at what Cuz is doing. So let's rewind really quick. And so, here's the thing. Um, this lane will slow push back into <coughs> Apto. So what Cuz's job is right now is to actually CS this as fast as possible. He needs to CS this. If Cuz doesn't CS this, this lane will stockpile with the next wave that'll come out of the Nexus, and then it'll be ready for Apto right after his recall, because it's a cannon. So if he hard shoves it, it's still going to be a little bit bad for Rumble because of the state of where he died. Um, but it's it's not going to be as bad as if Evelyn didn't do this, or if Evan, Evelyn didn't have the ability to do this. Apto comes back up, he has level 6, so Evelyn actually has to be really careful. Um, and what he's trying to do here is he's trying to make sure that the lane state probably just actually resets and that Evelyn ends up being denied some of the XP, and now the same thing is going to occur. You see this small delay in the minions, this small lockup. This will, we talked about this in a VOD review yesterday. There's an imaginary line in mid lane. And depending on where the minions lock up, if it's on this side, it will push here. If it's on this side, it'll, it'll push into this team. So this small little delay means that the reinforcing minions coming from this team will cause it to push back into Apto. Very, very subtle lane manipulation, super important. So right now, on the first buy, he actually went Tiamat. You can see that, um, so let's take a look at what he's looking at. Alright, so you see what's happening down in bottom lane, and you can see, now this is another reason that you use F keys, or you pay attention. Alright, so if you just look at the mini-map, alright, let's say that you're Apto right now. Let's just say that you're looking at the mini-map while this is happening. You can see the portraits of Tom Kench and Cho, Right? You can still see the portraits of Tom Kench and Cho before Rumble appears. You can see the portraits. What you can't see is that they're covering minions. You can't see that Cho'Gath and Tom Kench are circumventing eating minions to keep walking at Vladimir and Shen. You can't see that just by looking at the minimap. It's not possible. So if you F key down to the lane really quickly and you can see that, you know, wait a minute, they're walking right past the minions. Something's not right. That's not normal behavior. You can then make a very quick decision being like, okay, I'm going to come into this lane, I'm going to shove really fast, and then I'm going to start to move. Because it, it, it's getting information for free. You know, you just hit an F key and you look. So let's look at the exact moment that they start to walk by the minions and neglect them. Already. It's already too committed. Actually, it was probably at like 6.30-ish. They were too committed. The movements aren't natural. Now, we always talk about in coaching sessions and VOD reviews, spacings and tetherings, right? Now, they went from holding uh, a pretty good distance away from Vladimir and Shen and being relatively defensive to closing in at a range where Vladimir and Shen should be able to trade with them or poke them or hit them, and they don't seem to care about it. So there's a behavioral pattern that's not, uh, it, it's not in line with how they've likely been playing the lane out thus far. So you can read that a gank is probably coming. This is going to be applicable for top laners. It's going to be applicable for mid laners. This is obviously just one of the psychology things that can go into reading a gank or knowing exactly when the jungler is likely about to show up. 
uh, inside of your own lane and whatnot. If you're a laner, you probably have felt this all the time, that someone just suddenly runs right past a minion wave and they just start trading with you. Exceptionally good players at the highest MMR, they will make use of this tactic consciously. They will know that, okay, my jungler is on wraiths or wolves and there's no way that he's warded. I'm going to run past the minion wave randomly. I'm going to make the laner scared. Now, it's something that you can only do when you factor in uh, a lot of variables. A, are you absolutely sure that your jungler is not uh, visible on the minimap? Uh, B, are you absolutely sure that your lane opponent does not have every angle covered? C, is your movement in line with a gank path that your jungler could realistically take? Okay, if you're up in top lane, all right, if you're up in top lane and you start running at them like this, but your jungler could only come from here, it doesn't make sense. That's not, that's not a realistic gank. Okay, now if you're up in top lane and you randomly start running at them like this and your jungler could come from river, well, that's a little bit of a mind game that you can factor in. You can just arbitrarily or seemingly arbitrarily run past the minions to make them think what's going on. It doesn't make sense. And they might end up backing up too much. They might miss CS. They might lose control of a pocket that they're trying to control because it's favorable for them inside of the lane. Um, so anyways, this threshold is already crossed. Apto has already made the decision to instantly push the wave. You can see Apto is almost on his way. Vladimir ends up going down. And then Rush is going to end up picking up the kill onto Tom Kench. He hits them, and Apto is going to be able to get the final kill onto Rumble. Oh! Doesn't actually end up being able to secure it. And so that's a little bit unfortunate. And so now, right here, what does he do? He instantly shoves this. Okay? Now, we can look at something here. And we can determine, does he need to shove this? That's the real big question. Now, Rush, you know, taking a page out of his his NA days, shoves the wave. Okay? Taking a page out of Tarzan's book. So, what ends up happening here is that if you don't shove the wave, the opponents don't have teleport. Okay? This is a cannon wave, so it's very durable. It's very tanky. These minions could have just simply been thinned out. Next cannon wave comes... And then it gets shoved right underneath the turret. Vladimir and Shen have lane priority, lane control, clear out vision. You have Scuttle Crab. Apto can probably just end up going back into mid lane because uh, he has, I'm assuming he has corrupting. He does. So he's going to be able to go back into mid lane. He's going to be able to get healthy. He's going to be able to shove out the wave. And then as soon as Vladimir and Shen are back down inside of bottom lane, Cho'Gath and Tom Kench are actually gank susceptible again. It doesn't matter that the red buff is actually up. Um, but, uh, oh no, I'm sorry. This isn't Rush on... Uh, Rek'Sai, I'm getting confused here, but, um, Rek'Sai shoves the wave. So, this doesn't change the fact that if he doesn't shove this wave, what ends up happening here is the lane locks right here, okay? Shen comes back down, Shen holds the wave, Vladimir comes back down, okay? Rek'Sai could repeat gank, right? If you can confirm there's no ward here, Rek'Sai can repeat gank. Absolutely, it's, it's, it's a pretty safe repeat gank. The question is, is that if you do repeat gank right here, you potentially concede your red buff. And then after you concede your red buff, Evelyn would have a pretty secure route to just go right back into her blue and get the blue. Apto is probably just going to run right back up into mid lane. He'll arrive there a little bit late. It's okay because the threshold is crossed uh, on to Rumble's respective side of the lane. So this means that the lane will actually come back into Apto, which is fine. Um, but these, these are multiplayer decisions that have to be factored in. Um, so does Rek'Sai actually get any benefit from eating this wave? So that has to be one of the main questions. So you can see right here, Rek'Sai is still level 5. And then Rek'Sai wants level 6. Now, can Rek'Sai get level 6 and then be done? Already level 6. At this point, Rek'Sai should leave the lane. Now, the other choice is what they actually end up doing. Um, and we can talk about the effects that it can have on the game. Rek'Sai eats this wave, and Talon eats this wave. This wave, you can see Cho'Gath is already up, okay? This cannon wave will then actually come here 
And depending on the speed at which Shogath actually arrives, which I've lost uh, track of when he actually just went down, um, you can track when he'll come back into the lane. So 12 seconds. Um, so let's see. He just spawned. Alright, so hold on. Let, let's, let's try to track this. I don't know why he shot a Seeker here. Because Cho'Gath is actually... Cho, Cho, is, Cho is right here, I think. Pretty sure Cho's right here. So I don't know why he shot a Seeker right here, unless he was seeing something from Rumble. Um, but what, what ends up happening here is now this causes a giant slow push back into Vladimir and Chen. So it's a little bit of a different nuance. Um, and everything is going to affect the lane to a certain extent. So Cho's right here. Uh, yeah, thank you. All right, coach, by the way. Um, so Cho's right there. So I don't know why the Prey Seeker went down here. Cho's going to be able to come back to this lane. And then this minion wave is right here. So it's actually right in line with Cho. So this is going to be a two and a half wave crash into the opponent's turret. And then it crashes back into Cho'Gath and Tom Kench after that. Uh, and so Evelyn should actually be on the right-hand side of the map at that point. So, we'll, we'll have to see um, what's going on here. Now we'll go back to Apto. Coming back into mid lane, you can see how Vladimir and Shen are choosing to play out bottom lane right now. Now, there's five spellcasters. He has a choice. Do you insta-shove, or do you let the four spellcasters live? This one might actually die. So you'll have eight spellcasters, uh, or no, I'm sorry, you'll have six spellcasters, and if Rumble doesn't show up and push immediately, you can zone him out of a couple CS, uh, you can't zone him out of the XP, but you can zone him out of a couple of CS uh, worth of gold. Um, and so after you can see that he's actually ignoring going for the CS right away. He comes back, and now will he shove? So he's just last hitting. He's actually not raking. And now he ends up raking. The only thing I can think of when it comes to why Rake right now, it's because Rek'Sai has finished Wraiths, and if Evelyn shows at Rek'Sai's red, because Aurelia has priority. Um, if if Rek'Sai had done red first, and Rek'Sai had a, a ward on red, like let's say that Rek'Sai has a ward right here, and it can see all of this, okay? If Rek'Sai did this to this, not only would Rek'Sai be an idiot, because red wouldn't level him up, um, but that's an entirely different topic. Um, Rek'Sai would already be safe over the major neutral objective, and Gangplank wouldn't be obligated to go. So, <clears throat> the only reason that I can assume that he shoves at this exact moment is if he needs to move to red. So, had Rek'Sai done this, if there was a ward here covering this, Rek'Sai does this into this, Talon doesn't actually need to shove. Um, and he can actually zone Rumble out of some CS. Because Rek'Sai is going into a dark red, uh, or a dark red buff, and Aurelia has priority, you can see that Aurelia actually comes back into vision, so it doesn't actually matter at that point, but you can see that Talon began to move up, and I'm pretty sure that this is just covering the angles from where Evelyn can actually be right now. Evelyn just charmed uh, Apto. Now, this is, this is really strange. Um, this is actually really sad that this gank ends up working. Um, I can't imagine what Rumble's thinking. You have to know that... So, so Rumble's actually playing like an idiot. Uh, number one, his jungler's on the right-hand side. He's susceptible to a gank on the left-hand side. 
and he's not playing right pocket. He's standing in the middle of the lane. It makes absolutely no sense because this means that Rek'Sai can actually approach you from the fog of war. Um, Evelyn is on the right hand side. So I, I just said that. Evelyn's on the right hand side. He should be playing right hand pocket. He has no vision. We we know they don't have vision here because we can we can see the pink wards. So he's playing this really really bad. This is actually a really really pathetic gank that ends up working. Really 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 sad. This guy's getting dunked on. Now they end up killing Rumble and they shove together. I actually don't think that it was necessary for Rek'Sai to shove together. And then you you saw that Rek'Sai was actually pathing towards the left-hand side, probably wanted to get the Scuttle Crab. And then Tom Kench actually goes up a little bit too far. They saw the blimp from Evelyn. I don't know what Rek'Sai is doing, but it doesn't really matter as the Gangplank Ultimate comes out. That was a really, really close call. Um, it didn't actually look like Apto was on the same page uh, as the others. He doesn't actually hold aggro... Uh, which is really interesting, because it, it, it let, me, let, me, let me look at this. So, Vladimir, if Vladimir takes aggro first, and takes two turret shots, pulls, and then Apto takes it, they'll kill Evelyn. And then Rek'Sai spam pings Apto, saying that you have Ignite, and I don't know. I mean, I think that the coordination was all bad. Apto shouldn't have gone over the wall. Vladimir should have been the initial one to tank aggro. Rek'Sai should then proceed in. And then Apto should take aggro. And then he should be able to get out. And Apto ends up dying. I would be tilted too if uh, fucking Rek'Sai uh, pinged Ignite. All right, let's look at the lane that Apto's coming back to. So we can see here, Rumble is back in the lane. This is a very ugly lane state. So you probably just want to shove this. And then after shoving this, maybe you path to the left-hand side. You look for a ward or you actually clear the wraiths. Although your jungler was recalling, but then Rek'Sai actually stopped the recall to path bottom. So maybe what happens, I, I, there, there's a few options. We can either kill this. Uh, so we, we rake, path up, kill wraiths come back down, place ward, push wave, move bot, or we clear this and then we move bot immediately. Um, but this would actually be really good if this is a cannon. Is it? It's not a cannon. It would be so much better if it was a cannon because if you did this into bot, so if you just went like this and that was a cannon wave, you could be able to get back into mid lane in time. Okay, this is fine. This rotation's fine. Looks like he's committing to it as well. See this? <clears throat> if it was a cannon wave, it doesn't look like this. Unfortunate. And that's actually how something as subtle as like timing your roam on a cannon, or timing a recall on a cannon, um, can be that important. You know? And so now he shoves in the wave. It looks like he's coming to check for vision. I mean it's really it's really, really bad that he didn't he didn't he didn't move through this brush, which is unacceptable. You just check if there's a pink, and yeah, it is. Uh, that's really bad. <clears throat> Doesn't make any sense. You can just path through mid-river and go through and look for a control word. He shoves in mid lane again, sees Evelyn. 
He doesn't really have any obligation to go home right now. He's full HP, he's basically full mana. He can come in here and check on blue, which is probably what he's gonna do. No, he just paths towards it, but doesn't actually go for the full commitment to check on it. Comes back into mid lane, probably just wants to keep maintaining perma priority on mid. Really, really cool to play against a Talon that can just do this. Absolutely love it. Truly magnificent to face a champion that can just ignore laning phase. And then run around the side lanes. I guess it's a little bit better than Anivia. Anivia players tend to uh, just accept the fact that <clears throat> they're terrible people. They just avoid laning phase, you can't really kill them, and then they wait. It's really great. Reminds me of old Talia. Looks like he's running up, trying to find Aurelia and Evelyn. And ultimate comes in from Rush. It was actually a pretty good angle for Eve. They failed to actually kill anyone there, and now Evelyn is running for her life. Talon's a pretty good champion, but probably not going to be able to catch her. And so now at this point, Rek'Sai actually summons Rift Herald up in top lane. I think this is a very, very good Rift Herald timing. They're definitely going to be able to get damage onto the tier 3 turret. You can see that Rumble is trying to rotate. Cho'Gath and Tom Kench are actually too slow. Uh, Apto should probably not go bottom. He should probably just go to Wraiths and steal Wraiths. So shove in this wave and then go to Wraiths immediately. Steal the Wraiths away since you know that Evelyn must be tied up in top lane. Because that, that's the location that all of the opponents are forced to react to. He doesn't actually go to the Wraiths. Instead, he's pathing over towards his teammates. I don't think this is actually necessary. Um, so I'm... I, you know, uh, I'm pretty adamant that this is not the most important thing to do. In fact, this is higher risk than anything else. There's definitely a universe where he probably ends up dying here, uh, or having to blow his flash. Uh, I think it would just be so much better to have killed the Wraith camp, uh, came back into mid lane, shoved another wave in, um, get turret damage on that mid turret, uh, especially because a cannon wave would have been coming, and then you can actually just path down into Vladimir, or you can path down into bottom with Vladimir and probably even get bottom tier 1 turret. I think those are safer plays. Uh, the path that he ended up taking, uh, a little bit higher risk, potentially higher reward, but I don't think that it's actually that necessary. He walks all the way back up, and now he's going to recall. Comes back into mid lane, and he's going to shove it out. Now he comes over with Shen and Gangplank. Looking for a kill onto Evelyn. She ends up just ulting away. Paths down into bottom lane with GP. They should actually be able to get some decent turret damage on this, because Evelyn doesn't have ultimate, Aurelia's in top lane, and she just died to Rek'Sai. And so this is actually quite a good rotation, because Vladimir is in mid. And you can see that there's not a lot of incentive uh, from either team to seemingly try to capture the mountain, although the blue team is very hard-pressed to come up with any ever anything, um, because they're all just bleeding across the map. So it's almost near impossible for them to come back. At this point, their team composition would have been very, very oppressive if they were ahead but they weren't really ahead. They're going to kill Tom Kench here. Apto should probably just run into mid lane after this. He should just run up into mid. Yeah. Uh, teleport comes in from Aurelia. Apto should just go over a wall and go into mid. I don't know. It looks like he's sticking around just to add pressure by uh, giving his presence. He actually jumps... Oh, his ultimate is back up. Coach, by the way. Shenzel actually comes in, and it looks like they were looking for a turn. This is still a very volatile situation. Um, it, I think it would just be better to have the three members stick around. Apto goes into mid to draw a member mid, and then Rek'Sai just continues going up in top lane, because Rek'Sai 
is essentially getting a kill just off of the CS and the XP from the minions that he's consuming in top and that the opponents are missing out on. This should be pretty easy to clear out, and you can see the next wave is actually going to arrive in time, so there's no reason for Apto to even break aggro. So we should be able to get mid-tier 1 here, and then after killing mid-tier 1, I think that the only thing that he could look to potentially do would be to go to his own Wraith camp and eat that, but since they're not up, we're probably just going to see a recall. Comes off Fountain, he's Duskblade, and it looks like he's going into Black Cleaver, but I don't think that he needs to go Black Cleaver, and the reason that I don't think that he needs to go Black Cleaver is because Rek'Sai, um, and there's not a lot of other reason to, you know, guarantee that your team composition's getting a lot of armor shred. So I think the only thing that Black Cleaver maybe adds here is that it gives him tankiness, uh, and obviously it gives him faster uh, ways of getting to the CDR cap. Uh, because if you, if you go for all of the lethality items, you only go up in increments of 10%, whereas the Black Cleaver gives you that big burst to 20. Um, so I think that, 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 realistically, that's it. Unless he ends up going like Titanic Hydra later, but I, I don't know what the, the full build ends up being for him. I think being tanky isn't that bad on Talon, because he often overkills opponents anyway. Ends up killing the Mountain Drake, and now he is running down into bottom. In competitive, this would not be, uh, I think, the, the primary decision because the opponents are handshaking on a fight that there's never a universe in which they win. And it looks like, actually, yeah, they're going to get aced. Rumble's just being dogged down, like the degenerate in the streets that he is. Not quite a malfight, but, you know, we'll give it to you. And now they just go on to the Nexus, and that is it for this talent review hope that you guys enjoyed it we got to talk about actually some pretty good roam timings and lane manipulation stuff and why lane manipulation can be as fragile as it is in addition to talking about f keys and calculating uh champions respawn movement speed and why it matters for lane states and whatnot so overall i think it was pretty good